mean? <laughs> What's that? How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? How far along are you now? Um, pretty close to the end. <laughs> so you're not like eight, nine? Like eight months, yeah. Well, I'm seven, so I'm right behind you. No, yeah. Oh my god. Are you having a Pisces? Um, I think in Aries. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yay, but also I've hit that point. I don't know if you're feeling it, but I've hit that pregnant point of like tired and needing to slow down a little. Yeah, very, um, I'm like tired. I like, baby brain has been really bad the entire time. And so I'm yeah. like, I can't wait to like get back to feeling like I'm remembering everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely yep. Really? I'm right there with you. Well, congrats. That's so exciting. And I just saw your post. Congrats to your husband on 14 um, years of sobriety. I know. I know. It's so cool. It's like such a special day. So I'm so excited to, uh, to be doing this with you. And um, it's just so crazy because like when we were putting the Frenchie virtual refresh together um, and your name came up, I was like, that is just so wild because I, like I told you, I have my husband doing your workshop now. Um, but I did your workshop, like, I think three years ago, three wow. years ago. Yeah. And it changed my life. It really did. Like I, I've always been someone who believes in manifesting, um, and like read the secret back in the day. And, like same. So <laughs> but about your workshop that I felt what I, you know, and obviously like with manifestation, it doesn't start right away. It like obviously starts and you know, it, it, it can take maybe a year and like, but I really did become very authentic with every choice I've made since doing your workshop. Wow. It's, that's honestly the best feedback because that's the whole point of magnetism. It's so cool. Like, and you talk about it a lot in it. And I was just like, Oh yeah. Like I love this. And sometimes we think we, know what we want and it's what we think is right for us mm -hmm. and I remember it being like I was doing my makeup company illuminate cosmetics and I was like yeah no this is really like my passion and it turned out to like it wasn't really authentic for me and right for me and it really if anything guided me to Frenchie which is very wow. who I am so I'm I'm such a believer in your work. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you so much. I had no idea when, you know, we figured it out. We're like, that's so great and amazing that you felt it, you know, that it was really helpful. And honestly, I think the question we get so much, hi, everybody. I see so many hearts and stuff. <laughs> um, but the question we get so often from people is how do I get my partner to do this as well? Like I'm up leveling, I'm becoming magnetic. I'm stepping into my authentic self. And our answer is always like, you can't, you have to lead by inspiration. If there's a suggestion, um, you know, and it's like energetically when you're moving, it's just the law of energy. They have to meet you or it's going to become ten, you know, tense. So it's really beautiful to hear that your guy's doing it. I mean, that's so expansive yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, he's such a creative person and I just feel like he's into this stuff too but like obviously we kind of do it in our own time and our own way and um it was just like something that i'd been wanting to gift to him and it was like one of his gifts for christmas <laughs> and i was like wow and he was like <gasps> so down and so excited to to you know do it so um yeah he's having a blast and i think it's also just your approach to it is really um it's just real, you know, it's it, it, what he, what he loves about it mainly is like, it's like the secret is kind of like in this, like, Oh, you have to be positive at all times for things to work. And like mm -hmm. yours is very like, you know, you can have a negative thought sometimes. <laughs> like, Completely. Yeah. Know? I mean, I think that's how I even got into it is I practiced all of that for so long and I mean, especially I was very unconscious and very young and I was doing the hicks and, and all of that. So it was like, stay in the vortex. I'm like, what the fuck is a vortex? <laughs> so, I mean, I've totally been there. And then, you know, it wasn't until around 25 that I really started to figure out, oh, hang on, this has very little to do with positivity and it has everything to do with being in your worth. And so that was um, a game changer for me. And I thought I only had a superpower that that worked for me, but it was really friends and everybody around being like, show me what you're doing. 
And so I finally started to teach them. They manifest and I was like, oh, hang on. This is like a step-by-step -step approachable thing to manifestation that has tremendous results when you really, really, you know, put the work into it. And so I think it's been really refreshing for a lot of people that, you know, you can let that exhale go that you don't have to always be positive. And you actually, it's much more about really like getting to know who your authentic self is, living from that place, setting boundaries. And my favorite thing that I always tell people is no is the most magnetic word you can use on the planet, which we've all never been taught. So um, yeah. yeah, it's really refreshing to hear that. Oh, it's so awesome. Have you ever read the book, Your Power to Heal? No. I, my gosh, okay. I just, it was so interesting because I read that book like two years ago when my, my dog Maui passed away. Oh. I had Big Sur and it just talks about like just the same stuff that like you've talked about, but in, in healing like your body and and healing just traumas and stuff. So if you ever check it, if you want to check it out, like it just is very much about like how we can manifest things in our body as well. Versus I love that. Yeah. I'm really into uh, like, yeah, how I believe that trauma st stays in the body and using mind over matter and, you know, the power of healing. So I'm going to have to check that one out. That sounds like a good one. Well, I'm so excited to do you're doing day two and, um, yeah want to know like you know obviously like all the manifestation tips from you personally because I didn't like this is so funny because I've watched you on your videos for so long and now like seeing you it's pretty awesome it's amazing this is so great to connect and also to be in such a symbiotic space together I don't think I know anybody else who's like right there in pregnancy with me right now so here's That's the power of the female forces getting together <laughs> people that are pregnant right now it's wild <laughs> I know it's all the COVID babies it's going to be like the new baby boomer oh I know um well please lead us into you know like obviously your your tips into manifestation and you know how you started and um we just want to know all of that yes so for anybody who's not familiar with our process our company is called to be magnetic and essentially, it's a very, very different approach to manifestation than probably what most people are familiar with, which is it tends to be what I call the spiritual bypass model, which is fine. Um, but it usually tends to be think positive, get into the vortex, pretend to be what you want to be, visualize until it comes to you, which I too practice for a very long time, like I said. Um, and little things would happen, but never the big profound things that I wanted. And I really realized that I stayed extremely... Um, complacent. I was never able to up level out of a certain level in all aspects of my life, career, money, relationships, all the things. Um, so actually, this work is really rooted in neuroscience, psychology, and energetics is what we call them, learning how to read your own way to dance with the universe. And it's really been cool this past year because we've brought on an incredible psychiatrist neuroscientist who has really gone through all of our work. And although it was already steeped in those, she's made it really, really backed by science, but not um, overwhelmingly nerdy. So another aspect of it that really works is that it's a real step-by-step -step process. So it's not as abstract of like, get into the vortex, feel that vibration for a long time. When you live in that frequency, it's going to come to you. It's actually way more approachable. And so the three things that it centers on, um, and three of these have to be in motion at all times to manifest, is that number one, we don't manifest from our thoughts. So that's a really big misconception that, you know, whatever we think is going to come into existence, but you can take a deep exhale right now, because if you think about it, we have X amount of thoughts that go through our mind every day that are totally polarizing. I suck, I'm great, that person sucks, they're great. It's all over the place. And so you still tend to, uh, what I like to say is that your life would be a shit show if you were that powerful. <laughs> so it's not your thoughts. It's actually very simple psychology. It's we manifest from the imprintation in our subconscious minds that we picked up from zero to seven. So basically anything we witness during that time and that we experience may it have been media, our community, our caretakers um, at school, all of that imprinted into us in our limbic brains and it's still looping and projecting out so anywhere where we picked up high self-worth so it was reflected back to us that we were 
smart enough, good enough, all the things, we tend to manifest those things very simply because we loop and believe and we put that out and that's what comes back. However, anywhere we experience pain, shame, not good enough, um, and programming, those are what we call blocks. And those are still looping. And they're literally like this force that's pushing away your manifestations because you're literally projecting out, I'm not worthy of this, I'm not lovable enough. Um, so very, very simple psychology. So that's the first thing. We manifest from our subconscious mind. So it's so relieving that we don't have to worry about our thoughts all day long because they truly do very little for us in way of manifestation. Number two is that another misconception is like you have to visualize it into existence. And while that is a really wonderful practice, neuroscience backs that up, it shows it. What's much more important for manifestation is your subconscious mind needs to see to believe what you're wanting is actually possible for you. So you have to see to believe it. So to explain that, um, a great example I like to give, I use this. And so if anybody here is listening that's listened before, it's just a very simple, simple example. I remember being a waitress at the Laugh Factory envision you know visualizing my malibu home with my sauna and my infinity pool and i was literally making 300 dollars a week as a waitress um and so what's going on there is i had never been exposed in my life to anybody who was living that lifestyle um, and they had gone from being a waitress at the laugh factory to living that lifestyle and having that therefore there was nothing inside of my limbic brain that believed that that was possible for me no matter how hard i sat and i smelled it and i tasted it and i felt it so that's what we call expanders you have to go out and find and expose yourself through osmosis may it be on social media May it be in community, um, a friend of a friend, a story that your friend tells you about their ex-partner. You have to collect enough expanders who were exactly where you are now, whether you're manifesting partnership, finances, career, a better sense of self. They have to be where you were and they've gone on to become successful in and have it or have what you want now. So that's where you have to see to believe, showing your subconscious that such is possible. So that's the second part that has to be in motion. And then the very third is self-worth. <laughs> that is literally energetically the law of attraction. So if you look at this, and this is kind of, it can be controversial, but if you, you know, people will tell me they're like, well, no, it's positivity is the law of attraction. That's what really pull being in frequency with what you want. That's what it is. But if you look at things, even, you know, psychologically speaking, narcissists make some of the best manifestors because they really believe that they're worthy of everything that they want, even if they're terrible human beings, not to say anybody's, you know, terrible if they suffer from narcissism, but it's a really good example that positivity has very little. What has everything to do with it is that you're communicating to the universe through your actions, through, and we'll get into this reprogramming your subconscious, that you are, you're getting back to your whole worthy authentic self. So that little piece tends to appear as what we call tests. And nobody ever explained this to be a manifestation. I had to figure this out myself when it all started to become really successful and move with ease and up leveled very quickly, the universe tests you. So anytime that you are say calling in a partnership, maybe you were in a relationship before that was very steeped in low self-worth and you were treated, whatever, maybe you were a doormat or maybe it was an emotionally unavailable person, when you begin to call in the next experience, the universe is gonna test you with somebody who was sort of like the last person you dated and you're going to have to turn it down no matter how beautiful and amazing the package looks you know you really have to navigate with self-worth and so that's what actually began to be the the big key that taught me whoa everything i've learned about manifestation isn't actually how this works it was when I began to really step into my self-worth that everything started to transpire. It was like the universe was like, wow, look at you really like, you're really getting back to your worthy self. You're this amazing creation that I put onto the planet. Um, I'm going to start to gift you with what you want. So that last little piece are tests and self-worth. So 
It's subconscious mind, not your thoughts. Expanders, not visualization. Self-worth, not positivity. That's the real foundation of this work. So it's very approachable and it's really rooted in everyday dynamics that you experience. And the best way, I love to tell people this because I think when you experience the old manifestation model of think positive, you're so afraid to ever be in negativity or have negative thoughts or experience your emotions. But here at TBM, we're like, those are the best things ever because they're your blueprint. We call them triggers or being activated. It shows you exactly, it roots you down. It's a little like map down to the memory in your subconscious where you picked up this experience, pain, shame, or programming that is activating you and hurting you and re-traumatizing you. And you get to go, oh my God, that's the block. The universe is mirroring to me right now that that's the block of what's, um, you know, like pushing away my manifestation that I have to go through and unblock. So our big process at TBM, rather than sitting and visualizing in frequency all day, is actually through a hypnotic process. So very simple neuroscience that we have these beautiful things called deep imaginings that we created here. It's a very specific process of hypnosis where you'll take whatever's triggering you or something you're wanting to reinforce, but we'll stick with the trigger. You'll take whatever's coming up in the day because that's the universe showing you, you need to work through this to move to the next level of what you're calling in. And you take that and you have a journal process that we go through and then you listen to this meditation that right to the memory that you of zero to seven, that time that I company and you'll find it and unblock it and literally it starts to open the gates for what you want to come through and then going and finding your expanders again seeing to believe that creates the space for your manifestation to land and when you pass test and you get into your worth that magnetizes it to you so that's sort of the foundation of this work i love that because it's so funny i've always been like a huge fan of vision boards and yeah. It's like, you know, in the past, though, it's like some stuff works, some stuff doesn't work. And I think that when after I've done your workshop, the vision board really changed for me because I feel like it really was almost like what I was manifesting, I was putting on my board. So then it was mm. even it because it was like, it was already in motion of like what versus me just picking out pictures and like being like, this is what I want. This is what I want. It was like, I just feel like I was just mirroring something that was already in motion and was more like, yeah. Cause then it's like, then I was like actually picking stuff off my board being like this, this happened. <laughs> yeah. It's like reinforcing it. And I like to tell people with vision boards here, we're like, if you like them, great. But just from simple psychology and neuroscience, a key thing that I like to tell people, vision boards are really amazing for things that exist in multiples. So say like a car, say it's like, I want a white Audi A4 2008 or whatever, you yeah. know that you can manifest that in multiples that exist. There's many of them, you know, you can call in the price you want. But the one thing that gets a little tricky when you're working with your subconscious mind, again, it's that reptilian brain, that limbic brain, um, is when you're putting, say, uh, you know, two people on a beach that I, this, I'm just like kind of making jokes of what used to be the secret, but say the relationship you're calling in and it's like these two people from a magazine ad that's not you um, and it's not the exact person you're calling in, your brain can't really register. It, it's kind of like not having to believe something before. So we're a huge proponent of writing down, but again, from a psychological standpoint, the vision board can be super reinforcing for what you already know. Is, it's like, and again, I don't think that this is a necessity for manifestation. You don't have to harp on it. You don't have to reinforce it in the sense of like, I'm going to visualize this 10 times today to bring it closer, faster. It doesn't really work like that. 
But when things are in motion, when you're upping your self-worth, you're unblocking, you're expanding, and you happen to find the picture of the multiple that you want and starting to put that on your Pinterest board, starting to put it on, you know, your, your vision board, it can be really reinforcing. No, it's so true, though, because it is it is really, you know, when I do a vision board, I know it's not exactly that picture of that, you know, certain car, like you said, it'll be a different like color of a car that's like that. But I think it's like not having that attachment and yeah. that that's like, that is going to come to light. But it's so it's like, I am, like I said, such a huge believer in manifestation. There's so many things in my life that has really happened because I put it out in the world and I, um, you know, wrote it down in a journal and, and really got specific. I think, I think the biggest thing for me was getting specific of what I wanted. You yes. know, that's something that people don't sometimes maybe take the time to do is that they're like, they really just don't know what they want specifically and writing it down enforces like, you know, reinforces that. And, um, but the unblocking is so important because like you said, I, I did all of your, you know, meditations and all of the unblocking and it really does help. It's just like, it's so helpful in any type of, you know, I've been working since I was obviously three years old in this business. So it's, it's something like, you know, like I know I'll always work because yeah. that's just how I'm, my brain is like, I've been doing it for so long and I'll continue to do it, but like specific, you know, getting more specific on, on, you know, roles or like stuff that I really want to accomplish. It's like, yeah, you have to unblock some of, you know, some stuff because a lot of this business is rejection. And yeah. so it's like unblocking those memories of like wanting that part and not getting it. And so it's huge. like such a huge um, tool to use and it's been so helpful and um, yeah, I mean, I'm just such a huge believer in your work. Thank you. And I mean, you bring up such a good point. Like I acted for quite some time and I remember like really traumatic things happening where um, even a manager at one point was like, eh, if you got a boob job and you like lasered off this part of the freckles on your arm, you'd probably get a lot more work. And then it just didn't resonate and it wasn't my thing, but also like that made me so insecure and feel so much shame. And so when I would, you know, like go and read for anything, it was just like, ah, I'm, I'm not good enough and I'll never. So it's like really unblocking any of the shame that's coming up for us, any of, and it's wild too, because a thing that we'll hear when people first start the work, especially if they, they've had really, you know, privileged upbringings, they would say, well, my parents were great. My childhood was awesome. I'm like, great but you're a human and you're unique and once you start to do the deep imagining hypnosis is you're going to start to realize that maybe they were fantastic parents or you went to an amazing school or you had great caretakers around you and family they still didn't know you and your uniqueness so there's always points of shame or pain or uh programming that you received and when, when i'm saying programming to explain that we all come onto the planet completely these whole authentic new little slates of being. And I believe that that's all the universe is trying to get us back to because all these layers will be put onto us through societal programming of what a woman has to be or what a person has to be or, you know, all the, we all have experienced this version of what to be to be loved. And however, we're so unique as beings, as spiritual beings, that when we start to dig off those onion layers through unblocking, you'll start to really get to your authentic self and start to feel like what you were saying in the beginning, your authenticity and coming from that authentic place, that is magnetism. That's the ultimate magnetism. So all of this work is to get back and it's to teach you like how to peel the onion layers off, how to see maybe all of the things you've never been exposed to that your soul truly desires getting specific about it, and then having being taught boundaries of how to say no to anything that doesn't align with that, or turn things down that don't align with it, to really, really harness your true authenticity, and bam, you're the most magnetic force. That That's like the recipe for it. Yeah. Obviously, I was married when I did your workshop, but what you talk about with relationships, it was such a, you know, when Chris came into my life. I had been in a relationship for four years, like on and off. And 
it wasn't the best relationship and it was like just kind of you know just like stuff that I felt like I deserved better <laughs> and I knew I was a really good girlfriend um and it was interesting because I remember saying like after me and my ex had broken up I was like I deserve someone to treat me the way I treat someone else and like amen I was like, I deserve this. And I had this feeling. And then there was this, like, I literally said to my best friend, I was like, and I feel like if I stay in this relationship and allow yeah. going, I'm going, the person that I'm meant to be with is going to pass me by. And I'm not kidding you within a couple months. Like I knew Chris just as a friend and I, I just didn't know him very well, but he started popping up way more. But then there was like another guy that popped up that was like a mirror image of my ex. <laughs> Ooh, see, this is how it works, guys. This is such a good example. Oh, no, thank you. And yeah. I, like, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And so it was just wow. like, knowing exactly knowing your worth, knowing like that you deserve, you know, especially like when you're a good person and, um, you know, like we obviously all make stupid mistakes and stuff, but like, sure definitely deserve the life that you want to live and I think it's just knowing that you know like obviously there's going to be some moments in you know weird years like last year but um but I think that it's just so important to to know who you are know that you're worthy and like you said it's like it's really like you are enough just being born just being your unique self is enough in this world and whatever you do with that is even better, you know? So, um, so yeah, so I totally, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And it's so, it's so true. And I think especially as women, you know, not to make it gender specific, but, and, and I only say this because I've never experienced being a man, but it's like the pressures of truly understanding your worth and deservingness are, they make it nearly impossible, whether it comes to like, physical comes to emotional comes to I mean, it's it's just so layered that, you know, a lot of us can be like, well, I feel like I'm in my worth in our conscious minds, you know, and really, I feel deserving. Um, but I always like to say the best way to take inventory of that if you really truly are is do you have what you've been wanting? Because it is the best, you know, and so you gave such a great example, you obviously innately have already begun to you had already begun to understand a lot of these energetics. I mean, I imagine you're an incredibly intuitive person because you're a cancer, right? Yeah, so <laughs> naturally very intuitive. Um, but how incredible is that, that you had the wherewithal to, rather than repeat a pattern, which tends to be just like very simple trauma bonding is what they call that in relationships, you had the wherewithal to stick the claim in the ground that no, I deserve something better. And I'm going to turn down this experience that mirrors this last experience I was in. And, you know, even though your partner was in your life already, it made it so much clearer. Because what I like to say, too, is the universe, you know, if we're getting into the law of attraction, usually what we're calling in is a little bit higher than where we are. It's just simple human nature. We tend to want to strive for more, you know, so a better job or, you know, a relationship that exceeds maybe what I was in in the past or else I would still be in that relationship therefore there's something there that we have to get onto their plane and what that is is their deservingness meets our deservingness their worth meets our worth so it's like you know I would get clients when I used to take clients that would come to me that were really promiscuous they were like well I'm, I'm you know like really empowered sexually like I've only met a couple of women that are truly that like that it's not really something that they're doing to appease someone or et cetera, et cetera. So we would really investigate that, you know? And so some of them it's like, well, yeah, I just kind of sleep with the guy after, you know, a date or two, or I sleep with the person after a date or two. And it's like, okay, cool. But are the, is the person you're calling in that's probably up here, are they doing that? Like the person you're envisioning? And this is just one tiny example. And usually the answer is no. So you can really see through re reflection where your worth might not be mirroring the worth of what you're calling in. So less about you have to be on the positive frequency or the love frequency of where someone's at. It needs to be self-worth meets self-worth. So it needs to be healed trauma meets healed trauma, essentially. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. Um, do you want to answer some questions from sure. what they uh, 
what they have to say. Do, does anybody have any questions? Yes, if you have manifestation questions, go ahead and ask away. Let's see. Do you know if you're having a girl or boy in the meantime, or are you sharing yet? I, I, girl. <laughs> Me too. Two Aries girls. That's amazing. Okay, can you save this? Probably will. Yes, we are saving it to Frenchie, of course. Well, let's talk about this. So many people, I love this, actually. This is fun until we see a question come through. Um, but everybody's like, what's your favorite high school musical character, et cetera, et cetera. This is actually a really fun, tiny little thing to test out. Talk about manifesting that role that probably changed your life. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because um, I remember that for years I, I was, you know, when I was younger, I was like, you know, so excited to do a TV show. And I was doing like pilots ever since I was like 16. And I, but they would never get picked up. And I was always bummed. I would never get the role of, I was, I had dark hair, curly hair, and I could play a blonde character really well. And I was so bummed. I never got the, um, I was just like, I never got that job. And it was like, even to the point where I was screen testing for an ABC show to play Kelly Ripa's niece. Yeah. I was like, I don't look anything like Kelly <laughs> the part really well and of course I didn't get it because they went with a blonde but I was like I can really do these parts but then I had like visions of like me being blonde at one point and being like maybe I'm gonna ch like change my hair color and I would just have these dreams sometimes and like envision me and like just blonde hair and like also a oh, weirdest thing ever when I was in high school in school um, you know, High School Musical came at a time when I was 19, 20. So I was already graduated. But I remember being in high school being like, how cool would it be if I was filming a movie on campus and like going back to school? And it was so strange. Um, and basically, right before High School Musical happened, I kept on having reoccurring dreams that I was back in high school and having to take Whoa. like stuff. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, why do I keep having this reoccurring dream that I'm back in high school? Like, I don't want to go back to high school. Like I hated like having to do like schoolwork. And I was just Same. like, it's happening. And I swear it was like just a reoccurring dream kept up. And basically a high school musical happened. And at that point I was already blonde because of the sweet life, but it was just such a weird, like, you don't know, look back and remember these like moments of being like, Oh, I remember that weird reoccurring dream where I remember sitting in like my like chemistry class being like, how cool would it be if I was like, you know, doing a movie right now and then like come back, I would like have these daydreams. And I was like, and then I did like this movie high school musical. <laughs> Wait, this is such, you brought up such a key point. So anybody listening with manifestation and obviously we always hear in spirituality, like intuition, blah, blah, blah. So a part of the process, our process of manifestation, we call pings. And it's so amazing because the universe will ping you. It'll continue to ping you. Everybody receives them in their own different intuitive ways. Like yours obviously is very clairvoyant, like you see it, you know, um, you're dreaming it. That's humongous. So mine will come through like a smell or I'll feel someone in my stomach as I'm like having a moment of a memory or uh, feeling into something that's about to happen. And so the universe always pings you, especially when you have the creative space, like you're clear, you're well, you know, you've slept well, you're eating well. And so it's so amazing that the universe was literally like, it's coming, it's coming, you need to be blonde, the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this happens to all of us all of the time. So if you're calling and say a partner, we'll say, cause we're in February love month, you have to listen to every ping that comes up, you know, so if you get that ping and obviously times are much trickier now for everybody, but you know, an example I used to give where it's like 10 PM, go to the store right now to get that one ice cream that you like at that one exact place. You have to say yes, you have to listen. Or if you're calling in an apartment and all of a sudden it's like, go check Craigslist or whatever at this very moment, the universe is literally communicating that to you. So I love that you shared that because it's such a huge highlight to start to take inventory of how do we receive our intuitive hits and 
starting to act on them all. So I always tell people, I'm like, keep a list with you in your iPhone. If you can't hop on a plane right now to Germany because you're getting that ping, keep yeah. a note in your iPhone and you'll, it'll continue to ping you just as you continue to get, because it's like, it's coming, you need to connect with this, it's happening, but you can go through and act on them when you're able to. So pings are a huge, huge part of the process. And I love that you just shared that. And I'll totally answer some questions. Do I, ha I do have a capacity here to, to scroll these down. Once, one that I saw that came through was, will you be tested before every manifestation? And this is a great question. So when you start to do this work, especially wherever your self-worth is at the time. So if it's a very low in ratio to what you're calling in. So if it's very low and say in dating, maybe I use the expression doormat because I was one for a long time in Los Angeles <laughs> until I got with the picture, you know, and it's like where emotionally unavailable person comes after one another and they don't want to commit, but they want to hook up and all the stuff. So that's where my self-worth was very low. The lower it is, the more you'll be tested. And the more you grow your self-worth, your test will actually show up as triggers. So it'll show up rather than say an opportunity or uh, I like to say that with partnership, right? Like the person coming along, it's like the dangling carrot, the universe being like, are you gonna take what you used to take in the past? They'll show up like that when your self-worth is kind of low, but the more that you grow it, it starts to show up as triggers. So it can be three people in your life who aren't respecting your boundaries. And it's just like, man, that's the same trigger, the same trigger, the same trigger. I need to do the work to see what this all roots down to. The universe is literally asking you to unblock that part of you. So the tests start to vary between opportunities or triggers. Um, and then somebody here said, how can I best, how can I pinpoint past trauma to let go of them? So in our workshops, it's a really simple process that we really walk you through. And it's a daily practice if you want it to be or three times a week. And like you said, it's similar to a meditation. So it's a hypnosis. And when you're doing hypnosis, the beautiful thing about it is it takes you into the theta state. So it takes you into that deep relaxation, nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing like you're gonna start quacking like a duck or anything you've seen on TV. In fact, I like to tell people if you've been driving many miles and you forget everywhere you pass because you were kind of going through something in your mind, you're in a state there that's hypnosis. So in this meditation or hypnosis, you go into the theta state. And that's where the subconscious mind comes forward and the conscious mind goes backwards. And when the subconscious mind is forward, it can't tell the difference between what's real and not real. So inside of these hypnosis, they walk you through this journey and ask you questions along the way, and bam, you'll get to the root of the answer of where you picked up that past trauma or that past childhood memory, and you get the chance then to reprogram it and heal it. And so it'll say, do a reprogramming now. So say it's maybe a memory again of that example I gave where you raised your hand and you said something in class and the teacher shamed you and everybody laughed and now you, you don't understand why you're really afraid of public speaking or putting yourself out there um, or on social media and you get to that memory and you're like, holy shit, I totally forgot that that happened. This I'm still projecting. So I'm literally through my subconscious mind saying, stay back, I don't wanna be seen. Um, I don't want anyone to like get close to me or I don't wanna put myself out there. So in that moment, you would reprogram that experience and whatever you need to do through that memory in order to get to a healing. So to get to a place of self-worth. So that could be, the teacher really loving your answer and saying, maybe that wasn't correct, but we'll work on that together later. You know, so you reprogram these experiences and they create new neural pathways. So those old loops that are looping, they start to die off and these new loops of self-worth start to connect and that's what starts to project. So it's a very um, beautiful and specific process and you'll have journal prompts before. So that's what you were doing in the workshops <laughs> you were doing. That's what you say, the unblocking. Yeah, yeah, the unblocking is just so helpful. And I think it really, it just, it's what helps you really bring in what is authentic to you, like you said, and what I have experienced. So um, I love it. And I, I thank you so much for doing this. Um, yes! It's been so much fun. And like for anybody who wants to check out Lacey's work um, to be magnetic, 
go to her Instagram. I, I, I can't express to anybody enough. The workshop is amazing. It is like, I, I just feel like it's something you have to do because it's like, it, I mean, it's an investment <laughs> into your life, I think. And so I just like love it. And I, um, I'm so grateful. Thank you so, so a little bit, but Ashley for the time and this on connecting with this community. Yeah, we are huge manifestors over here. Um, I know your pause. I love that. Yeah, um, well, thank I know you so, so much. I'm, I'm so know. sorry. And so for anybody who wants to check out anything, we always say um, check out the podcast. It's called Expanded Podcast. So it comes out every Friday, totally free. And the most beautiful episode to start with is called Manifestation 101. And you'll literally start to understand, like, she's talking about all this stuff, but we really lay it out there or any of the explained episodes. And then the next place we always tell people to go is we have a free clarity exercise. So if you're on the site and you go and click over to clarity, you'll be able to actually test out one of these hypnosis with journal prompts and really see if this process is for you. And then the second thing, which is really cool because you already set, start the unblocking, but what's really cool and totally free, those are all free, is we have what's called the motivation on our homepage. And it's all of the testimonies of all of our members. And what's amazing about it is you start to read them. So they're all categorized by love, money, career, travel, and whatever you're manifesting, click on the one. And as you're reading them, you're already beginning the process of finding expanders, of seeing to believe like, holy shit, that happened for them, that can happen for me. And from there, you can explore further. But those are all free fun ways to kind of engage. And thank you so much, Ashley. We're thank so you grateful. Thank so, so much. Congratulations on You things. too. <laughs> Good luck with birth. Thank you. You too. I know thank you have you. Great intentions and manifestations. I know. That's all I'm focused on. Yes. <laughs> well, have a so beautiful day. Thank you so day. much. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>